This video will look at drawing with the shape Oko. And here we see a drawing I did a couple years ago of a Sierpinski carpet. And here's a detail of that. And one of the nice things I like about this drawing is it looks like it was done by hand, but it was actually done by a robot, so to speak, a shape Oko. And in this video we're going to look at how to set up Rhino Cam to talk to the shape Oko 2. So here's my file in Rhino. And I just want to go over a couple things that I've set up here. The first thing that I've set up is I've made my drawing, the overall drawing, 10 inches by 10 inches. And then I've set up this border that's a half inch offset inward so that I can give myself some room on the paper um, so I'm not extending the machine past that. Okay, so let's look at the process of setting this up in RhinoCam. So I'm going to go ahead and open up RhinoCam 2014 and I'm going to make sure that I open up Mill. Okay, I can close this other window. Okay, so let's go through what we have here. So we're working on a 3-axis CNC machine. This is our post file that generates the G-code. The next thing that I'm going to set up is our stock. So I'm going to double click on stock. And the drawing size that we're going to work with is going to be 10 inches by 10 inches. And the height I can leave at 0 0.04, which is equal to 1 millimeter. Okay, and to see my stock, there's a stock visibility button in the lower left. So that turns my stock on and off. Okay, then first thing that I'm going to do under setup is I'm going to set my work zero. And I'm going to make sure for this that my work zero is set to XYZ zero zero zero. I can click generate. The type of tooling that we're going to do is going to be an engraving, which means that the tool is going to follow the center line of these curves. So I'm going to go ahead under two axis and I'm going to choose engraving. The first thing that it's looking for is me to select the containment regions or in this case the geometry that I want to draw. So I can click on select drive containment regions and I can go ahead and select all of my geometry that's in red. That's what I'm going to draw. I can go ahead and remove what I don't want and I can hit the enter key okay, and that places all of these here the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my tool so I'm going to be moving left to right and then I'm going to be going up to this top row so next in order is tool flat mill is a default we're actually using a pen so there's really not too much to set up here if I click on edit create select tool I can go to flat mill I'm gonna set the diameter you see I've set it here to half a millimeter just to represent uh, a thin pen I'll click OK I'm gonna go to my feeds and speeds and the speed of my spindle is going to be zero we're, we're drawing with a pen we're not drawing uh, or we're not using a CNC machine where we have to set the motor speed. So I can set that to zero. My plunge approach and engage, I'm going to set those to 800 inches per minute. It's quite fast, but we're, again, we're using a pen. Um, and my actual cut, retract, departure is where the drawing, so you can think of cut is equal to drawing, retract is when the pen raises up from the drawing and departures when it leaves the drawing. I'm going to set those a little slower. I'm going to set those all at 400 inches per minute. Okay, so that's feeds and speeds. Now I'm going to go up to my clearance plane and I'm going to choose an absolute Z value and I'm going to set that to 0 .08, so 2 millimeters. So my pen is going to drift 
when it's moving from square to square, when it transfers over from this square to this square, let's say, it's going to hover about two millimeters above my drawing. So I save a lot of time with that. The z-axis isn't going up really high and then having to come back down. So I'm choosing absolute z-value 0.08. I cut parameters. I'm going to set the location of my cut geometry. This is really important. The location of my cut geometry, I'm going to set to at bottom. So when I set my Z height on my shape oco, I set it right to the top of the paper. And then that's the location of the cuts or the lines that we're making. Those will be at bottom. Entry and exit, I can leave that at none. My sorting, I'm going to choose minimum distance sort because this is what I found actually draws the quickest. I'm going to go ahead and click on generate. So now RhinoCam has generated the tool path, which is the path that the shape oco is going to follow to create the drawing. So I can go ahead and I can simulate or preview this. I've clicked on the simulate tab and I'm going to go ahead and click on play and you'll see it's going to simulate the actual shape oco creating the drawing so let's take a look at setting some of the simulate settings to see this actually draw a little bit slower and this is more important when we have less geometry I'm gonna go ahead and double click on engraving to bring my settings up and under the drive regions I'm gonna go ahead and remove all and I'm just gonna pick one rectangle so I'm gonna go select drive containment regions select the one rectangle hit enter click on generate and now I'm gonna go over to simulate and I'm gonna press play it goes really fast I don't really see the movements where it started where it ended so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck simulate by moves and I click play and there I can see that a little bit better and I can even slow that down on the preferences So you can see that just a bit better okay so once you've put in all these settings what's the next thing that you need to do the next thing that you need to do is you need to use this post processor this post processor creates the G code and it has all the correct settings for the machine that you're using and then this G code will talk to the shape oco through another piece of software so what you need to do is you need to right click over your engraving and choose post and then you can save or post this file notice it's a .nc file stands for numerical control and then it opens up that post file in notepad the first three here we have G0, G17, and G20. These are just some basic G code settings. For instance, G0 is rapid motion, which tells the machine to move as fast as it can. G17 sets the XY plane. G20 sets the units we're working in, so G20 equals inches. Engraving is the tool path that we set up in RhinoCam which is our drawing toolpath. S sets the spindle speed. Doesn't come into play in drawing. 10,000 RPM would be the default setting for the spindle. M3 turns the spindle on. Now we have G0, which is telling the machine to move as fast as it can in the Z direction, 0 0.08. So this is gonna lift up the pen. The next set of instructions is going to be for drawing. And you see you have XY 
coordinates, so it's going to move in the x direction, it's going to move in the y direction. When you see g1, that's actually moving at a specific feed rate, or a specific speed. So here's the feed rate. So these are all motions of drawing. And then when we get the g0, again, move as fast as you can and raise the pen up to 0 0.08. M5 is shut off the spindle. M30 is end the program. So you would need to open this G code in software that actually talks directly to the machine. In our case, talking to the shape OCO, you'd open up Universal G Code Sender. So look for another video that gives you the instructions of how to work with Universal G Code and set up the shape OCO for pen drawing.